Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by, I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're gonna be talking about an issue with the IWI Caramel. I just did a video on it a couple of weeks ago talking about my initial impressions of it. And now just like, just a few days after I got that video out, boom, safety recall. <laughs> we'll talk about that here in just a second. But I also wanted to let you guys know that I have started a podcast. It's called the Live Laugh LARP Podcast. Myself and my cameraman, Hefe Actual, has uh, started this podcast up because we have some really awesome conversations behind the scenes. And like when we're getting together to go work out or whatever the case may be, we end up having like three hour workout sessions because half of that time is us just talking about firearms and things that we think could help improve the industry and workout stuff and movies and comics and everything else, you know? So we're gonna put this into a podcast. We've already got episodes one and two out. Episode three will be out on the 15th of November and I'd really appreciate you guys checking that out. I'll have a link to it down in the pinned comment and you can find it on most podcast streaming services like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, our iHeartRadio, so on and so forth. So check that out. In addition to that, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I'd appreciate you guys considering to do so and give me any type of interaction, thumbs up, comments, so on and so forth. My question to you guys is how do you feel about recalls? Is that a blight on a product or a manufacturer for them doing a recall or is it, hey, they're doing the right thing. They found an issue, they need to fix it. They're gonna go ahead and take it on the chin and, and uh, get that product back to fix it and get it back to the customer. Well, that's what we're talking about because the IWI Carmel now has a safety recall on the firing pin blocker. This was put out last week and I have went ahead and taking the steps to fill out the forms necessary to send this back. And that's one of the things that I really did like about IWI is the fact that they just took it on the chin, like I said, and is kind of getting in front of the whole situation to get this fixed and get it back out to their customers as quickly as possible. The process was really, really easy. In their uh, announcement, they talked about how to get that fixed, and um, I'll have a link to all of that down in the pinned comment as well. So you guys can check that out if you own one of these and need to get it fixed. I highly encourage you guys to do that. So good job on IWI for doing that. But I got to rant for a little bit because unfortunately, this was not given to me. This was not sent out to me by IWI. Um, I would really appreciate it if they would do that because <laughs> that would help out with my bank account a little bit, but I paid for this and as a consumer, I'm seeing a systemic trend over the last few years where firearm manufacturers are trying to get ahead of the game and beat everybody else to the market on whatever type of product and they end up putting out a subpar product. I'm not necessarily saying that the IWRA Carmel is a subpar product. They're just getting the brunt of my rat. So there is that. But we have seen, you know, a number of different firearms that have been put out to the market with issues. And I can name six of them right off the top of my head. The Ruger LCP, the SIG P320, the SIG P365, the Springfield SA35. Uh, you've got these Springfield Prodigy, and then the Glock 44. All of those, just in these last few years, have had issues immediately from launch. And that is a major problem. We should expect better from manufacturers. And to add to that list, we now have a safety recall on IWI. Now, what I will say, again, with IWI is they're leading the way and saying, hey, get it back to us, we'll fix it free of charge and get it back to you as soon as possible, no cost to you. That's awesome. They are not doing like other manufacturers that are saying, hey, we want to provide you with a voluntary upgrade of your firearm because we don't want to omit any fault of our own because we're embroiled in some lawsuits over that issue right now. So <laughs> uh, I do appreciate the uh, team over at IWI taking care of that. However, I really feel that there is a better way. And this is just my idea. This may 
actually already be happening and I'm just not a part of it and may not be aware of it, but I would love to see manufacturers send out prototypes to the gun tubers. Obviously, I'm a little biased on this uh, because it would uh, include me as well, but even if it didn't, you know, people like Reno May or Clayco 47 or Honest Outlaw, Mr. Guns and Gear, so on and so forth, these people who have built a reputation that is extremely positive within the gun tube space uh, could provide some really great feedback to these manufacturers who are getting ready to release a new product. They're already going to create prototypes. They're already going to expend the ammunition to test it. Why not give it to people who are better connected to the consumer to either improve the product or find faults in the product? And that's something that I would really like to see moving on in the future. If I could say anything to you guys, you should ask for that as well. So uh, there is that. Now, speaking with my best friend I've known since middle school, he works in the QA, QC uh, realm currently, which stands for quality assurance, quality control. Um, and he said, you know, when it comes to this particular case, it is probably a situation where IWI sourced products from a external supplier. That external supplier found a deficiency with a batch of product that they sent IWI, they alerted IWI, and then the manufacturer was then able to backtrace the serial numbers of that batch and issue out the safety recall. So I'm not saying that, you know, IWI should be kind of lumped into, say like six hour with the P320, but at the same time, I kind of feel like maybe that problem could have been found ahead of time, maybe? I don't know, maybe not. But at the end of the day, that's kind of how I feel. I'm a bit frustrated when it comes to the gun industry, when it comes to putting out products ahead of everybody else to make sure that they're uh, the first to the market on anything. And it just, it's, it's really frustrating. We've seen it with the P365. That was actually kind of an innovative design, but we also see other companies like, unfortunately, I hate to say this, <laughs> but Springfield, their Hellcat uh, seems to be doing it better, you know? So, uh, and, and I'm not aware of any issues with the Hellcat like the P365 had out of the gate. So that's kind of my take of things, but I wanna hear what you have to say. Sound off in the comment section down below. Are there other companies that have had issues right out of the gate? I would love to hear what you have to say about that. And then how do you feel when it comes to voluntary or involuntary recalls, right? With all that being said, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Like I said, if you are interested, check out the Live Laugh LARP podcast. I'll leave a link down in the description below and in the pinned comment as well. And I appreciate everybody's support. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. As always, freedom through strength. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all. Sig P320 or the... Uh, safety recall, you have to send it back or we're not going to be liable. So. Roxy, hush! <laughs>